We're in the middle of introductory concepts in spectroscopy, and the prior video has uh, told you about the Beer Lambert law. Uh, an ingredient in the Beer Lambert law is the more extension coefficient, which is uh, the concept that we use to start this video with. All right, so again, we know that uh, from the Beer Lambert law, you have that the absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration of a species J. And this is usually uh, uh, the, the way that we use this uh, expression, right? Uh, we can measure the absorbance. If we have the more excessive coefficient on the path length, then we can figure out what the concentration uh, of a solute is or, or, or uh, an active species is. Now, our question is that you actually need these excision coefficients, and, and uh, the question is how do you actually obtain them? Well, uh, this is not difficult to do. You can imagine do an experiment uh, in which you take the spectra of the substance for a known concentration, say one molar of J, that's a known concentration, and then if you have a path length of one centimeter, then uh, when you look at this uh, expression, then the absorbance that you get out of the experiment, if this is one molar, and the path is one centimeter would be exactly uh, the molar extension coefficient. Okay, this will be your uh, epsilon molar to the minus one centimeter to the minus one. Okay, and this might be something like this. Okay, so you get all of your epsilons, and then uh, you can uh, rerun uh, these uh, uh, measurements for an unknown uh, concentration of J at a particular wavelength, and then from the epsilons you can find uh, what the concentration is. Right. Something interesting happens uh, uh, when you actually are trying to do this for two different substances that might be related. Okay, so uh, let's assume that now we're looking at uh, two uh, active substances. Okay, and then when you uh, measure the uh, more existing coefficients, they actually look like this. Okay, so you have that uh, there's one point okay, in which the moral extension coefficient of the, of the two substances is actually identical, okay, uh, and we call that the isospecific point, right? So uh, something actually interesting happens uh, that can provide uh, a lot of information about uh, how these two species, which are different, okay, convert into each other. Okay, let me actually redraw this for a specific, a specific example of uh, hemoglobin an oxyhemoglobin, so that you can see the usefulness of this uh, representation. Okay, so again, we're going to now uh, draw this a little larger, okay, and we're going to be plotting lambda. And here's going to be absorbance for uh, hemoglobin, uh, uh, which is something like this, and oxyhemoglobin, which might be something like this. Okay, this is an exaggerated uh, uh, picture of how uh, the spectra of hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin look like. Okay, but this uh, is just to illustrate the point. Again, notice that you actually have there a point that is seems to be quite interesting. Okay, so here's the idea. Uh, when you have when you have a mixture of those two, okay, uh, suppose that you're actually interested in this uh, chemical reaction. This is the binding of uh, oxygen to hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. Okay, so uh, in a particular experiment, you have a mixture. You might have a mixture of uh, hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin, and then the absorbance uh, will be simply uh, the sum of this term for hemoglobin and a similar term for oxyhemoglobin, right? So that would be uh, epsilon of uh, Hb times molar concentration of Hb path length plus epsilon of HbO2, molar concentration of HbO2 path length. Okay, now the interesting thing is that if you're actually doing the experiments right at this wavelength, okay, this term and that term are actually exactly the same, which we can call epsilon. And then you can just simply rearrange this expression, uh, take a one factor of that epsilon and the path length, and then this expression simply turns into the following. Absorbance is going to be equal to the extinction coefficient, which again at this point is exactly the same. Okay times the concentration of one plus the concentration of the other one times the path length. Okay, so why is this interesting? Well, uh, suppose that we actually start an experiment in which uh, uh, we place here a concentration of, I don't know, uh, 0 0.1 uh, molar of hemoglobin, and then uh, there's enough oxygen to actually uh, be in excess, and then we have initially no uh, no hemoglobin, uh, oxyhemoglobin at all. Right, so then the way that the spectrum is going to look like uh, will be something like this. 
Okay, so these will not be present at all. Alright? That will be what happens at time zero. But then, uh, as you let a little bit of time go by, what will happen is that these concentrations will change, right? So, for example, after some time has elapsed, this might be something like 0 0.07 molar, and this will be 0 0.03 molar. Okay? Uh, now, something interesting is that uh, notice that the sum of the concentration of hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin, this parenthesis actually hasn't changed. It's still 0.1 molar. Okay, so, uh, uh, however, what will happen here is that because you have less uh, of hemoglobin, then uh, your uh, spectrum here is going to look something like this. Okay? And then you will start to see the appearance of hemoglobin. Right, so that is the spectrum where you actually have about 0 0.7 molar of hemoglobin and 0 0.03 molar of oxygen of hemoglobin. You continue to let this evolve, what will happen is that 0 0.05 molar would be 0 0.05 molar. Okay, and again, something important is that uh, uh, this parenthesis still doesn't change, and the absorbance at this particular point, which is what we call the isosbestic point, doesn't change either, right? So you might have a spectrum uh, that might look like this. Okay, and then if you continue to uh, uh, let the reaction go, then you will get something like this, and eventually you will get only uh, oxyhemoglobin. Okay? But again, something important is that that point actually always has the same absorbance. And the reason for that is that the moral extinction coefficients are actually identical. Okay, so why is this important? Well, this is important because it tells you the presence of an isosmistic point, the presence of this point in which the absorbance doesn't change as a function of time, tells you that these two things are actually directly related. That is the important thing. Okay, they're directly related. The mechanism directly converts hemoglobin into uh, oxyhemoglobin without an intermediate step. Okay, why is this? Well, if there's an intermediate step where you form an intermediate I, it will no longer be true that the sum of the concentrations of hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin at any time will be equal to 0.1 molar. Okay, because some of the concentration will be sequestered by an intermediate. If that's the case, if the sum of the concentrations is not constant, right, if you actually have here an intermediate eye whose moral extinction coefficient is different from that of hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin, then you will no longer have an isosbestic point, and then the conclusion would be that hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin are not directly related. The presence, again, the presence uh, of this isosbestic point where the uh, absorbance is unchanged tells you that, again, this does not take place. Okay, hemoglobin must convert directly to oxyhemoglobin. Again, with, uh, uh, with this video, we have uh, showed an example for how uh, spectroscopic measurements can actually become more interesting than, 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 the, than, the, than just the usual measured absorbance and the determined concentration. Okay? Notice that you can actually obtain mechanistic information in some cases.